What's up, beautiful fam? Keep your heads up and a smile on your face. And keep your DNA the same way our Father created it. Are you excited? Because I'm excited. Because it's November 7th and we're approaching the biggest signs of the year. In the sun and in the moon and in the wandering stars they call planets. And here's the verse of the day. And it's 2 Timothy 1.13. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, the one and only, the King of Kings. And I posted this picture in the community that I just recently took of the moon and the clouds turning pink and I wanted to share it on video because for about a minute after it was pink, and there's no effects on this. I took this picture right after the pink one and it turned orange. It actually was looking red with my own eyes. And it's amazing. In the last couple nights, I don't know if you've noticed it, but Jupiter is right next to the moon. And at sunset, before it even gets dark, when it's still light out, you can see Jupiter, the only star in the heavens during the day. At sunset, and I set Stellarium to UTC time. And as you can see right here, this is real time, UTC. And the moon is by the head of what they call Cetus, which looks like a well. And Jupiter, the wandering star, is by its tail. And I'll take you back to Stellarium shortly, but real quick, right here, as you can see, a solar flare caused a radio blackout. It was Sunspot AR-3141 that exploded yesterday at 11 UTC. And when you look at the sun right here, you can see on the far right, Sunspot 3135. And they're not showing it here, but it's there. It's Sunspot 3134. In Strong's, I showed you 3134. The definition is Maranatha. And remember, the signs are in the sun, the moon, and the stars. So I'll take you to the moon now. Total lunar eclipse on November 8, 2022. It actually happens tonight, a.m. And I'll break down the time so you could know when it's happening right here. It begins at 8. And the maximum eclipse is at 11. And on Earth sky right here, they have the eclipse starting at 8.02 UTC time. That's 3.02 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's 12.02 a.m. on the West Coast. Other sites have it starting at 8 o'clock UTC time, which will be midnight on the West Coast. And they have the maximum eclipse time at 10.59 UTC. And that's 5.59 a.m. on the East Coast. 2.59 a.m. on the West Coast. So if you're on the West Coast, like me, family, and you want to see this eclipse, it starts at midnight, and the maximum eclipse time will be at 3 a.m. tonight. And here's something else that's gigantinormous. Note, a total lunar eclipse when the sun, earth, and moon are aligned, the earth in the middle, earth's shadow falls on the moon, November 8, 2022 is election day in the U.S. I've been saying this all year, and many are asking, when was the last total lunar eclipse on election day? Click here to read about the lunar eclipses on election day. Well, there's never been one, family. This is the first election day total lunar eclipse for the U.S. ever. First election day total lunar eclipse in U.S. history. A total eclipse of the moon will fall on the upcoming election day in the United States, Tuesday, November 8, 2022. And folks on social media are already asking, how often does this happen? So we look back and learn that 2022 will feature the first total lunar eclipse on a regular Tuesday election day in U.S. history. And we found it won't happen again until November 8, 2394. <laughs> Now I'll take you back to Stellarium and show you the total blood moon eclipse at maximum eclipse time at 11 UTC. 
And here's the moon right now, real time. And I'll move the clock back to 11 UTC. And when you go ahead a day to the 8th tonight at 11 UTC, you could see the total blood moon eclipse right next to Uranus. That means the heights, heaven, right underneath this constellation that they named Ares after a false god, the false god of war. And when you move forward three days to 1111, Cheshbon 17, the anniversary of the Great Flood. You can see that the moon is right next to the what they call the red planet, Mars, the wandering star. It's right next to it, right between the horns. Now we'll go back to real time and I'll switch to the sun. And as you can see, right now, the sun is starting to reach the constellation they call Libra. And Mercury is right behind it. And Venus is entering the middle of the scale. Right next to the asteroid called Nephele. That was discovered on December 18th, 1897. Strong's Bible Concordance 3507. The cloud that led the Israelites through the wilderness. And when I opened our old family Bible today, he took me to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud. Nephele. And all passed through the sea. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. Sound familiar, family? Because that's us now. Now I'll take you back to Stellarium. This asteroid named Nephele in Hebrew means cloud has been setting up this conjunction and all of these signs this whole time I've been following it. Now, the wandering star, Venus, is right next to it. Real time, right now. And I'll take you through the hours and you can see this is the first time that the wandering star they call the planet Venus will be passing Nephele. It passes Nephele as we turn to 11.8 tonight at midnight and at that same time i've showed you and i'll back it up to real time mercury at the top right hand corner is closing in on the sun right now and when you go through the hours and i'll zoom in you can see mercury approaching the sun and i've showed you this a dozen times family this is the biggest conjunction and it has a prophetic word behind it when you see the conjunction, enter the seventh house, know that I am at the door. Well, there it is. So family, know that Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, is about to be at the door. And I'll zoom back out. And I'll walk you through the hours to 1111, Cheshvan 17. As you can see, Venus is leaving the scale. Mercury just passed the sun and is heading towards Nephele, the middle of the scale. And on 11.11, Mercury and Nephele are right in the middle of the scale. Venus is preparing to leave the scale at the exact same time as the asteroid Babylon is entering the scale. On 11.11, Cheshvan 17, it doesn't get more clear than this, family. Judgment is upon the earth. The rapture is upon us. The resurrection is about to happen. And right then, when Venus is leaving and Babylon is coming in, there's the asteroid Fiducia right there. And Fiducia means trust. And if you go back a month, you can see the asteroid Vera is leaving the woman's stomach. And Mercury, Venus, the Sun are all getting ready to pass Vera. And when you jump back to 1111, you can see right there the asteroid Vera, that means faith, is right above 
everything that's happening on 11-11 in the scale. So have faith, family. Hold fast. And I've showed you the asteroid Hilda before because Hilda means battle, war. And on 11-11, you can see Hilda is leaving the scale right when Venus is leaving the scale. What they call the bright morning star. And again, let me just remind you, when what they call the bright morning star is leaving the scale on 11-11 with Hilda, that means battle, right then is right when the asteroid Babylon is entering the judgment scale. The signs will be in the sun, the moon, and the stars. And right then, and I showed you in the last video, the asteroid Ophelia is right in the middle of the scale next to Mercury when Venus and Hilda are leaving the scale. Right when the asteroid Babylon is entering the scale. Well, this is gigantinormous because Ophelia, when you look up the meaning, the definition is the Lord is exalted. And I haven't showed you the asteroid groom for a while, but let me remind you, on 11.11, it's right below everything that's going on. Right next to the serpent, what they call the serpent bearer. Right between that and what they call Scorpius, this three-headed constellation with the tail. That the comet C2017K2 is right next to its tail on 11.11. And right on the other side is the asteroid Amos. And right by the heads, you can see the asteroid Beryl. And remember, the prophet Daniel, he said that God's body looked like the barrel. And then Paul said that we are the body of Christ. So that's one of the reasons I've been tracking this asteroid. So Beryl's right there, right next to Daniel, the asteroid Daniel. And if this constellation swings its tail, it's going to hit this comet and draw a third part of the stars unto the earth. It could happen, family. This could be what we're seeing right now setting up on Cheshvan 17. These are the most signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars that are converging that we've ever seen happening at the same time, family. And right under the asteroid Daniel, next to the tail is the asteroid Lucifer. I've been showing you this asteroid for uh, probably years now, family. All glory to our Father in Jesus Christ's name. He's the one that showed me all of this and guided me to all of this. And remember, I showed you the asteroid Taiwan is right in the middle of the scale when all of this is going on on 11-11. While Netanyahu is trying to form a government, this is all happening right now, family. And remember, when you see this conjunction, know that he's at the door. Well, the conjunction happens on 11-8. So we're all waiting for Yeshua, also known as Jesus Christ. He said he went to prepare a place for us and he's coming back to get us to take us to that place. And it's our father's house in heaven. And there's many mansions there. So I take you to the asteroid Yeshua, which I haven't shown you for a while. And this is today. And as you go through the days, you can see the asteroid Yeshua approaching the woman's stomach. And probably crosses the line on November 18th. And it's not going to really matter unless we're still here. So by the 19th, the asteroid Yeshua is definitely in the woman's stomach. And I'll take you through the hours. Because you can see the moon approaching the asteroid Yeshua right there. All glory to our Father. All my faith comes from the word, from hearing the word. And if I could keep my head up and keep smiling and keep pushing and laboring for our Father then so can you, family. Keep praying. Hold fast. Don't let nobody nick away at your faith. Remember what this is all about. It's all about our Father loving the world so much that He sent His only begotten Son to die for our sin. And if we believe in Him, we shall not perish but have everlasting life. 
Back to the basics, family. Cling on to Jesus Christ, Yeshua. Hold on fast. Hold on tight. We're getting ready to take flight. These are his signs, and they're where he said they would be. This is what we're supposed to be watching while we're waiting for him. And while we're waiting for him, he renews our strength and mounts us up on the wings of eagles. So be courageous, family, and know that he's with you everywhere you go. And Christina's with us, too, in our memories, thoughts, in my heart. And everything reminds me of her. And it's beautiful. Remember, the word says that a death is better than a birth. Well, when people have children and a baby is born, everyone celebrates and says how awesome and great and fantastic and beautiful it is. And they have baby showers and they party and celebrate this life. Well, a death is better than a birth. So we're celebrating Christina's life. And we're celebrating the time that we had with her. And if we're still here, I'm trying to put this video together. It's a lot more work than I imagined. So let's all remember what Jesus Christ said while we're waiting for him to come. Revelation 3.11 Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Be patient and hold on to your faith and increase your faith by hearing the word. And in a second, we'll be seeing the word face to face. Jesus Christ, Yeshua, the Messiah. He's coming to open the graves and lift up everyone that has the Holy Spirit. 